Double your pleasure and double your fun with a J45. The workhorse comes with twice as many strings. We'll tell you all about it. Stay tuned. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, visit our Teespring store link below for custom designed t-shirts. Cooper, that J45 has a giant headstock on it. Yeah, it's about 12 pounds, one for each string. One for you know each string. It's hardcore. What's the deal? Why does it need such a big headstock? Because it's got so much going on, you know. Um, it's actually kind of funny looking at it from the back. But it's it it's changes awesome. the aesthetics of the open book Gibson headstock for sure. Yeah, but it's needed because this has twice as many strings. It's a J45 12 string, not something that's all that common. Yeah, no, it's so I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this before. Is this a newer addition to the line? It is a newer addition yeah. to the line. Now I believe that they've made them in the past. Yeah, but I can't recall maybe in the last 10 years yeah. them making them. Um, and, and it's definitely a new addition uh, for kind of this year. Yeah, so modern collection. Modern right? collection for sure, yeah. You can kind of tell, you know, the modern collection standard sunburst is a little different from the 50s it vintage is. sunburst. You yeah. know? So I guess you can kind of tell just by looking at it, but um, it is definitely a wild looking guitar and it sounds uh, pretty interesting. I luckily got to mess around with this a little bit today and play for the demo. And I'm, I'm actually pretty surprised. I think I have sort of preconceived notions about 12 strings sometimes, yeah. and this is pretty different to me. So what are those preconceived notions about 12 strings? Okay, so sometimes I find, I'm not gonna name names, but there's like another 12 string that I got to play a little earlier this year, and it's huge, but it almost sounded kind of very trebly and, and small. Kind of thin. Yeah, kind of thin. Yeah. And this, you know, everybody loves J45 for its warmth and mid-range and its workhorse qualities. And uh, it still communicates that warmth, even with the 12 string. And, you know, you got two doubled up treble strings there and then just a lot of high end coming off and chiminess, but it retains the good J45 qualities. I have really been impressed, I like it. 12 strings are difficult, I think, for builders uh, from a design standpoint. And the reason is, you know, a steel string guitar already has a lot of tension on it. Uh -huh. The design aspects of a flat top steel string guitar uh, largely come about from its inception. You're taking a previously gut stringed instrument in the in Spanish guitar, you're putting steel strings on it and trying to figure out a way to keep it from imploding, yeah. you know, in, in on itself from the tension. And so that's where we get things like the X brace design and, and variations of that, even V class bracing, it's all in an attempt to deal with that tension and then also balance that out so the guitar moves enough. You know, with a 12 string, you're effectively doubling that. Yeah. Maybe not quite because the octave strings have less tension, but uh, it's a lot of tension on the top. And so some people don't realize this, but if you have a kind of a 12 string counterpart to a guitar, it doesn't typically have scalloped bracing. And the reason is because you need that strength now. Yeah. Scalloped bracing is all about allowing the top to move more um, under the tension of strings. There's no problem getting the top to move because there's so much yeah. vibrating mass that's going on. Uh, so I think that's part of the design challenge. The other part is those octa strings can make a 12 string trebly and jangly sounding. And sometimes you kind of want that, yeah. but you don't want it running away from you. Yeah. You know, and so you want a 12 string that tries to balance that. And typically builders have done that with large bodies. Yeah. So most 12 strings historically have been jumbo bodies taking the cavity of the guitar to offset the jangly treble yeah. nature of the, the octave strings. Uh, to mix results, yeah. sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, it'd be interesting to look at maybe that Martin Grand J16 12 string, put this in the middle and then have the Taylor 652. Yeah. Because they're, it's like the Taylor's the other direction. Totally different. We're gonna yeah. go small body, we're gonna shorten the scale length, and we're and we're gonna put maple and spruce on it. Yeah. And it's a bright guitar, but it also is balanced yeah, in, in a weird wild. way. And didn't they flip? They did. Yeah. Yeah. Which, on that on those like... builders editions, they flipped the octave string so that you're striking the bass string 
or what, yeah. the, it, not the octave. Yeah. So, yeah, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, yeah. I think what you described that we're hearing is is what I, I kind of do anticipate from this. Yeah. You're taking a J45 whose strength is a lot of warmth, a lot of mid-range, and, and that what I call the Gibson lo-fi tone mm -hmm. on the bass, that bass is kind of like, it's, it's present, but it's broad. It's not very pointed in its attack. Yeah. And it underpins everything. And that sounds, to me, complimentary to what you'd want to get out of a 12-string. And otherwise, it's a J45. Yeah, which is great. I also, just looking at this angle, um, that Martin 12-string, even though it was a large jumbo body, it didn't have so much depth. Shallower, yeah. But this is J45 depth. You know, it's got a ton of room in the body. Um, and I guess the J45 is still technically a jumbo. Yeah, it's a jumbo. It's a jumbo. According to Gibson's 1930s nomenclature. Yeah. I mean, it's a dreadnought. It's a dreadnought. It's a round shoulder. It's a round shoulder dreadnought. But it's, it's a jumbo. <laughs> it's not an S, it's not, sure. an S, it's not a super jumbo, yeah. you know. But no, it's a, it's a heavy duty guitar. Um, and something that I have loved when playing it, you know, with the 12 string, it's not like you're ever going to be perfectly in tune, you know. It's always kind of a, a thing, especially when you hit the unison strings. It, it can be a couple cents off, you know. I'm glad this is a modern collection. Yeah. With all these tuners on yes. it. Yes. Because I'm thinking to myself, if it had the vintage style tuners, yeah. how fun that would be. That'd be a great time. You know how long yeah. it takes to tune a 12 string, right? Hmm. Nobody knows. So. Wow. <laughs> Mr. Owl. How many licks does it take to get? So um, basically what I'm getting at is with those subtle different, you know, differences between the strings and the tuning and everything, when you get it as close as you possibly can and your snark says you're in the green every time, it gives you a very pretty chorusy kind of effect. Yeah. And something that's cool with this one might just be from, you know, sitting behind it and kind of hearing it from a different angle than the audience, but almost had kind of like a, a phase type tone, you sure. know? And so it's like this natural jangly 60s, 70s kind of really pretty um, effect that sometimes when you have something that's so trebly and thin, it kind of loses some of that. But then when you have the added bass in the J45, it's just kind of this nice, well-rounded. It'd be really cool to maybe pick it up stereo or double it. And, yeah. You know, this would be a great recording and studio tool for sure. Well, that sounds cool. Let's give it a listen and see if we can all pick up on the nuances that your ears get. Check it out. So there you have it, Cooper's demo of the new Gibson J45 12 string. Uh, so if you already have a J45 and you really wanted another one, uh, now there's a reason to get another one outside of finish or vintage or whatever. Um, it is neck heavy, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, how could it not be? I mean, you know, it's not compensating for anything. But uh, yeah, big headstock, very neck heavy. With a strap, it'd probably be okay. Um, there's no strap button, so you're yeah. adding one or you're tying uh, your strap up here. 
What did you think about the neck, the width and the shape and everything? Well, that's kind of, you know, I, in a different video, um, we talked a little bit about some SJ200s and going from those, especially the custom shop, a little bit narrower nut, jumping straight to this, it was kind of a big, mm -hmm. big jump. Yeah. I mean, I know that you, you're going to need it to make space for all 12 strings, and I think that it's pretty comfortable for, you know, I think that's kind of a constant task for 12 string guitars is making the neck as yeah. comfortable as possible while yeah. still. Because it's going to be wide. I mean, yeah. there's no way around it. What surprises me on this is it feels thin. It's it, a it, slim taper neck, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's kind of like they took the J45 carve and they just stretched it and it makes the profile feel thinner than it typically yeah. would on the six string version. Not uncomfortable, just noticeable. Yeah. Um, particularly down here at the headstock. So... But overall, it's a it's a pretty cool guitar, and it has a, a nice, unique tone to it, particularly among 12 strings. Yeah. And we are lucky right now, if you're watching this as it comes out, to have this in stock and a couple other higher-end acoustic 12 strings because, strangely enough, we do get requests for them pretty often. Yeah. And so it's cool. You know, I'd love to maybe in a separate video or on social media or something compare those three, the Martin, the Taylor, and the Gibson, because they're totally different beasts, just like the standard model, you know, a six string model. From any of those would have a different sound in and of itself. It'd be cool to compare well, the two. What does the strings, public yeah. want? You gotta give them what you want. If you guys wanna see that demo, drop a note uh, in the comments below and say, we want it and we will deliver. Um, I do think that would be very yeah. compelling. Uh, very compelling television there it's just on YouTube. really compelling so anyways very cool guitar if you'd like more information about it go to our websites alamomusic.com these are new to the Gibson lineup this is the first one we've received after ordering it in January <laughs> so that is the situation in 2021 with supplies being constrained so if you're wanting one make sure that you act uh, now and if no one has one if we run out you put it on order it's pretty much how you're gonna make sure that you get something uh, but overall, very, very cool guitar. So if you go to our website, Alamo Music, you can chat with someone. They can give you specifics. They can do playing demos, get more photos for you, all of that stuff, and help you find the right guitar. You know what I always say? What, what's up? The very best guitar in the world <laughs> is the one that has twice as many strings that you need. That's what I always say. Perfect. <laughs> so anyways, thanks so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos, and keep coming back for more. We'll see you next time.